Good afternoon, everybody. This is Joyce from BoQ Creations on Elizabeth Craft Designs page today. I'm happy to be here today to do realistic florals with you from the Elizabeth Craft Designs Florals Number no. 4 set. I am one of their designers on the design team, and I am absolutely excited to be here today. Hello, Martha. Martha is one of our subbies from our... Um, BoQ channel. So thank you all for being here. Hi, Saskia. How are you? And Denise, oh my gosh, all these names that I've not seen before. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm really super excited. Um, I was, I, I love the realistic looking florals and I'm so happy um, that we finally have them. Um, one of the things that I love best about the Elizabeth Craft Design florals is that they can be as easy as you want them to be, or they can be as intricate and difficult as you want them to be. So they can be, um, basic florals or they can be, um, just, you know, all, all kinds of things, everything in between. So we are so excited to be here today. Oh my gosh, I can't even keep up. The comments are coming up so fast. Hello, Martha and Sandy. And Sandra Cummings, hello, Suzanne Jenkins, Anita is here. Hi, Anita. Oh my gosh, thank you for watching. Hello from Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh my gosh, welcome to the Live with Joyce. Let them know in the comments that you've liked, commented, and shared for a chance to win a $50 gift card to Elizabeth Craft Designs. Wow, thank you so much. All right, so without further ado, today I'm going to show you, Anita says hello from the Netherlands. Oh my gosh, Els, I, I, I understand now why you have trouble keeping up with the comments. Oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. Everybody is coming on. One of, oh, thank you so much for joining us. So let's get started. Today I'm going to show you um, how to make a frame. And then I'm also going to show you the realistic florals the way I love to do them. So I hope you can take and learn um, from that. And we absolutely hope that you will uh, like and share and um let's go thank you so much Els, for this opportunity and let's get busy i'm just going to turn the camera down here so that we can start to see what's going on so i will tell you that um i recently acquired this set um from the elizabeth craft designs um let me get it up here from the from the planner set i love this die so i'm going to be making a card today um, with this set because i absolutely think that putting something like this on a card with a flower in the middle is just unbelievably gorgeous so i do want to show you two quick samples that i've made already with the realistic florals i absolutely love um, the new stamp set that has come out with the book and the dies for the book. Oh my gosh. So all of these banners are so amazing. So I'm going to show you how to make the frame today and I'm going to show you how to, um, make these realistic florals. So this is the number four that I'm going to be, I'm sorry, not number four. This is the one I'm going to be doing today. Only I decided to do it in pinks today rather than purples, but you can see the dimension on these. Um, you absolutely can make them as flat as you want to, but oh my gosh, who wouldn't love to get something like that? Isn't that gorgeous? So you just do a little background, make yourself a frame. I'm going to show you how to do that today. So, up oh, straighten my camera. Is it kind of wonky? There we go. Is that better, guys? Hi, Diane. How are you? So let me show you a couple that I have done already so that we can kind of have a reference point. Now I have many, many, many of these die cut here and I keep all of them in this little box right here so that all I have to do is just um, have them cut and then here's the die set. Love this, it's a four, pe four petal flower. Um, these dies are really, really gorgeous. They already have the um, score mark in them and on this plate right here, oops, you get the stamen and both of these little pieces. So I'm really liking the plate. It makes it very easy to cut out. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Janine, Brian, o Coleman. How are you? And Pat Ford, Mercedes. Hello, everybody. Hello from Zwolle. Um, John Schmidt. Johann Schmidt. Schmidt. <laughs> Anja's here. Hello. Florals number 14 and 17. 
gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have the numbers on mine. Mine just have a card. So um, I do not have those numbers, but this is a four petal floral and you have a large one, a medium and a small one. So I'm just going to show you how I color these today and then how I assemble them. It's very easy. All you need is a couple of ball stylus, which I have here. And of course, my Elizabeth Craft Design paper, you don't start with the, without the the ECD paper. First of all, uh, in my experience, this paper right here is really, for me, what helps the um, floral stand up. It's actually um, what I, I don't, I wouldn't even think about doing realistic florals without the soft finish cardstock. It's just not an option. So um, secondly, you're going to want to have your kid choice glue here because um, that is an absolute must. And of course, my little snips from Elizabeth Craft Designs and my tweezers. So that is all I need besides a few markers and some imagination. And that's all I need to create these florals. So let me show you how um, I color these. Let me move these out of the way. There we go. I'm gonna bring in a piece of paper here just because um, I need to color on top of something here let me grab my piece of paper here i need to color on top of something so it doesn't get all over my mat um but you're gonna really really like this so i'm coloring on the textured side and i'm gonna use two of these tiny little guys here um let me grab them out of my so we have we have the tiny little stamen piece and then there's this one right here so I use both of these together in this particular flower. Now, let me tell you a little bit about um, why I love these florals so much. First of all, if you go online and Google a four petal flower, you will see probably, I don't know, 100 images of all kinds of different um, four petal flowers. So you could make anything from an orchid to um, just a zinnia or you know something of that nature very very easy not hard to do and then um, just shape them so I'm gonna just show you a white and pink one um, I'm using RV 32 which is that color and I'm using R 32 trying to turn these so you guys can see what numbers I'm using so you can see one of them is a little bit darker than another one's kind of a peachy one is a shadow pink so I'm just gonna take this peachy one first of all and I'm gonna just flick my marker just like this just like that can you guys see that da, 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 da. just like that very simple I'm trying to keep up with the Hi, Lisa. Laura Plummer from McCall, Idaho. Hi, Dina. Dina's one of our regulars on BoQ Creations. Hi, Dina. Hi, Karen. Love seeing all of our friends here on the ECD webpage today. I know Els is traveling today, so she may not be able to see us, but she'll watch us later. Thank you, Els. So I'm just doing some lines, just taking my marker and flicking um, just some lines down the center of the flower and then um, I'm doing all three of them now I'm not gonna put these one on top of another um, I'm actually going to make three different florals out of this but I wanted to show you how I do some with just the white paper because sometimes you don't even need um, a lot of color on the flowers to make them beautiful look at this this is why I love these flower, this collection right here. It is absolutely one of my favorite collections that they've come out with in a while. It's so versatile. You can use it for so many different things. So now I'm gonna take this little darker peach right here and I'm gonna come in and just right down here at the base of the flower, just color that in. See how easy that is? It is not hard, you guys. It's a little bit of coloring right on some paper. There we go. And then the shaping of it, most people are afraid to do realistic florals because they think, oh, I can't shape it or, um, you know, I, I don't know how to do it. But I'm telling you, it is not hard. If you have an alcohol marker, tri blend from Spectrum Noir, if you have Copics, if any kind of alcohol markers, they're absolutely going to be beautiful. 
I am going to turn over the back side of the flowers because I want to make sure that, um, you know, when I shape my flowers that there is a little bit of color on the back. So I'm just going to come in here just right down at the bottom and just give that a little bit of color, not only for the reason that I need some color on the back, but also because the alcohol marker and this paper, it wets it just enough that I can shape it and it will absolutely hold its, um, its shape 100%. So I love those. All right, now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna color these just real quick like this. This is why I love doing this, first of all, because I have all of these little pieces that I can just color with my marker. I don't have to carry around a thousand different colors of paper. I just carry around my one pack of Elizabeth Craft Design soft finish cardstock, my glue, my markers, and that's it. And I can make flowers all day long. Real, that's my preferred method. Um, that's, yes, the alcohol markers. It, it has something to do, and I wish I knew exactly what it was, but it has something to do with the texture on the the soft finish cardstock and how it, um, it holds that marker and the alcohol on it just, it allows it to stay moist just long enough. It's not wet like if you were to put water on it, but it absolutely holds that moisture just long enough that when you shape it, um, it holds the shape beautifully. Okay, so let me bring in my mat and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So in the um, set that we sell, the set of tools that you get um, when, when you purchase this set, you get a foam mat and three ball stylus with a pair of reverse tweezers. So that is all I'm using, but you certainly could use any ball stylus that you want um, and, and absolutely make your flowers that way. It, you know, you, whatever instrument you have, you can use the back of your ECD tweezers if you want to. Um, it all works the same. I prefer the ball stylus and who does not have one of these in their collection, right? I mean, so the first thing that I'm going to do before anything else is you see these these medium size or large size stars right here. I don't know what else to call them other than stars. Um, I'm actually gonna take this. Now watch what happens. Okay, let me see if I can get my hand under here. Watch what happens. So when you use these little snips from Elizabeth Craft Design, two things happens. One, you have really good control over the snip on the flower. But two, do you see how it automatically pushed one side up when I snipped? Do you see that? See how those scissors made that, that snip right there? So I don't have to do anything to shape this except cut it with these scissors right down the center. And that's going to be helpful for me when I come and do the um, shaping part of this. So I don't have to do anything else to these except color them and then take my little snips and cut that little star thing right in half. Can you see that? We sell it here at BoQ Creations. You can get it at www.boqcreations.com. And it's called the Flower Shaping Essentials. Here we go. And so I'm just taking these beautiful scissors. These are these scissors and tweezers are something that always stay in my flower shaping collection because I love doing this. It automatically forces, it has something to do with the way the scissors cut. I, I don't know, I wish that um, I could explain it, but it just absolutely forces one side up and one side down and it's very helpful when I go to um, shape my flower. So that I love, that's a plus. <laughs> so I take my um, ball stylus and I just push down into my mat, just like that. Um, else, what kind of block are you so this is a foam pad that comes with the ball stylus um, set. And all I'm doing is just poking my ball stylus down into my mat right there. And that's it. That's all I have to do to get my flower centers. Okay. That's it. Nothing more. Okay. So for this particular flower, let me go ahead and do this center part right here because I want those to dry before I do my, um, 
Won't the ECD paper drain the markers faster? It actually, to me, I haven't had any problem with that. So um, I, that's the only way that I know how to, how to color them. I know people have used um, ink on them, which you can absolutely do. That is not a problem. I just prefer, I mean, look at the color of this, the tone in that leaf. You know, I just don't feel that I could get that kind of tone without the alcohol marker. So I don't know that it drains the marker any more than any other, um, you know, any other set. But, hi, Kathy, how are you? So I want you to just see the center of that flower. Do you see right there how those little pieces are kind of just um, frayed a little bit and how they pop up? I love that. Love that dimension, and I'm going to show you how to get that today. So I had used um, yellow flower pollen that's called Linwood Gold, and you can also purchase that here as well. Um, or you can just use the stamen. You don't have to, you know, you can just use the stamen that come inside the, the flower shaping. I'm sorry, the flower set, the die set. You don't even have to use pollen. But when I do realistic flowers, I like them to look real. You know, so I'm just taking my pink pollen right here. Okay, so I've got my little bag of pollen. I have my Kids Choice glue right on my little sill pat here. I use a little blob of glue. You have to have the Kids Choice glue. I just, I do not even attempt to make flowers without the paper, the ECD cardstock, and the flowers. I, I mean, the, the, kids choice glue. I just won't do it. I have my fine tip tweezers here. Now, if you had a previous Elizabeth Craft Designs um, flower shaping kit, then you already have all of these um, tools in your kit. I know they don't sell them anymore. I wish they did. Els, you need to come out with tools again. Um, and I'm just taking and putting a little glue on the end of each one of these. I'm going to stick it down in the pollen and lose it right there in the bag. Fell off my tweezers. There we go. The red container is called a Silly Pot, S-I-L-I-P-O-T, and um, it comes, we ha we sell that here at the store as well, <laughs> OQ Creations. Um, we, so I'm sticking all of my little ends right down here into this glue. The cool thing about the Silly Pot is, is that you can leave the glue right there on the lid and it doesn't dry out. So, um, not recommended Martha, at least by me, you can use the hot glue probably to put them together. Um, but you know, that adds some, um, some bulk to your flowers. And I just feel like, um, you know, I want these to look as natural as I possibly can. And so, um, I, I do not prefer, hot glue. You don't need it. I mean, you really don't need it. Okay, so we're going to let those dry. I'm going to leave my glue over here. So let's go ahead and set this aside and we can shape our flowers. So here we go. We've got one here. I've got a large one, two medium ones, or two small ones, and a medium one. Watch how easy this is, you guys. Um, I'm not sure. I know we can ship it, but I don't know if it's available to them in the UK. Okay, so in this flower shaping tool set, I have a very small stylus, ball stylus. Do you see that? So I'm taking that one first, and I'm just going to go down the center of the flower, just like that. Can you see how it's already pulling that leaf up and curling it? Just before I have done anything else, this flower, oops, and I poked it right through, this flower is already taking shape. Do you see that? I haven't even done anything to that except to run that ball stylus down. So I will be doing a couple more um, shaping techniques to it, but this is the first one. It kind of softens up that paper a little bit. And already they're standing up. The petals are already starting to stand up. Isn't that cool? There we go. Just with a ball stylus, you guys, see how easy that is? It doesn't have to be difficult, you know? This is attainable for anybody. Um, Suzanne says, yes, you can get it in the UK. Thank you for letting us know that, Suzanne. I um, do not know. All right, so 
So that was my first one, okay? So the second one way I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tweezers and I'm gonna come in here and just go right up in the center of that flower and I'm gonna push right down at the bottom. Just like that. Put my tweezers in there, push around the edge of those tweezers. And I'm gonna do this to every one of them. It just gives it a little more realism. Okay, so after I do one of these, I'm gonna show you how to do one of those with the darker one, okay? So on these littler ones, it's kind of hard to do that. So I'm just gonna go in here this way and just push down at the base. See that, how I'm just pushing down right there at the base of the petal, okay? And I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a twist as I do it. So there we go. Let me show you one more time like that and just giving it a little bit of a twist against my fingernail right there, see? Look how gorgeous that makes the edge of that flower. Isn't that pretty? And it doesn't take but just a second. And it will go smoother. Yeah, I, I was doing that as I was shaping it earlier, but um, I left my wax paper out there. <laughs> so, yes, you're absolutely right, and that's a great tip. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. Just giving it a little bit of a... This one is kind of big, so I have to do it a little bit more, more aggressively. Here we go. And look at that. See, I haven't even really done much at all. Um, not much at all. So I'm going to take that middle ball stylus tool that I have, and I'm just going to rub the little center of the flower here just to make those petals come up a little bit more. And then the one last thing that I'm going to do to this flower is I'm going to turn it over and I'm just gonna take my ball stylus and press right down there on the tip of that tip of that flower, just like that. Okay? Just to make it look a little more realistic. Sounds like you've only had ball stylus on your hair. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now I've got all of these. Let's move that out of the way. And now I can bring my glue back in here my um, my stamens are already dark are already darkened. I colored those. They're already cut. So all I have to do is just take a little bit of the glue. Now you see, you want to dip it. You don't want to um, you want to dip it in the glue. You don't want to drown it. Okay. So I'm gonna set it into the center of that flower, and I'm gonna push it down just in the center. I'm gonna grab one of these pollen covered um, centers here. And I'm gonna set that in the middle. And this is why I'm using these tweezers because, now I'm actually gonna put two in the center, two of these with the pollen on it because I want it to look nice and full. So I'm actually gonna dip that into, it doesn't take very much glue at all. And I'm actually gonna stick a second one offset down inside of that flower because I want this center to be really, really full. Okay. So you'll see in just a moment, I'm going to take this and I'm going to poke it down. Can you guys see that? Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to take it and I'm going to poke it down with my ball stylus. And now that center really looks beautiful and full. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is take my tweezers and I'm gonna add this. I'm gonna put a small, tiny little bit of glue on it. Notice I'm just dipping. I don't want it on the petal of the flower, just on the end. And I'm gonna layer that again inside of another flower offset. And this will be a small little flower that I can put on anything. And it's offset a little bit. And see, isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful. I love it. So now I can take these two bigger ones that I have here and I can do the same thing. Now, one thing I am going to do is I am just going to curl the back side of this leaf just like that with my finger. Margaret asked, do you need to heat set the pollen? No, it does not need to be heat set. It just dries with the glue and the glue dries clear. So um, you don't have to do much of anything except let it sit for just a moment. I know sometimes it's hard because we all want to hurry up and have the flower done. <laughs> but um, it doesn't, 
It dries very clear, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, so I have some of these already colored and I'm just going to quickly shape them. Here's some, I'm gonna put another layer of a flower and then the smaller one on the inside. And then I'm gonna show you how to put that inside of a frame. By the way, I absolutely love the flower pot that comes um, with this new collection. Um, as you can see on this sample, I've turned it into a silver flower pot, but in my other sample, I made it into a terracotta pot. So I love, love, love the versatility of that um, flower pot. Very nice. Now, do you guys see how simple this is to create these flowers? All I'm doing is just roughing it up a little bit with my ball stylus. I'm not trying too hard to make them look real because just from the definition of realistic flowers, Mother Nature doesn't make anything perfect, right? Like all of the flowers are beautiful, but they're all unique in their own way. So I don't worry about, you know, having them all look the same or, you know, perfectly shaped or... The good thing is, is that this paper and the glue it will absolutely make it perfect for you. Here we go. Let me just shape this real quick again with my tweezers down here at the bottom. Kind of a little twist action there. There we go. Love the four petal flower. This is probably one of my favorites out of the whole collection. A little bit of glue right down in the center of this flower. And you see, I'm not doing anything difficult to it. I'm just letting it sit, you know, I'm putting the, the flower part down in there and then I'm not squeezing it or mushing it or anything of that. I'm just setting it down in there, poking it down with my tweezers so that it makes contact. So I am using the soft finish cardstock from Elizabeth Craft Designs, it's 240G or 90 pound. It's the only cardstock that I will use for flower making. It is um, absolutely one of the most perfect papers that I can use for my florals. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So, so beautiful. And now I'm gonna take and layer this piece also right in the center of this one. And look how full and beautiful that flower is. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? I just love that. Should we put another center in there? I think we should. Let's do another center real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna push it down in my mat with the ball stylus. I'm gonna pick it up with my tweezers. Just put it in the glue here. Make sure it gets all nice and gluey. I don't even know if that's a word. <laughs> I think it's a word, Steph. Gluey. It is today. Today it's a word. Put it in my pollen. There we go. And I am going to put it back on the mat because it kind of lost a little bit of its shape there. And I want that to be really, really full. And then I'm going to set it down in the center. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? So now I have a small one and a large one that I can work with. So while those are drying, I'm going to um, show you a little trick that I figured out with um, one of these, their, their flower um, petals, but I've turned them into leaves. Now they do have leaves in the set, which I will use um, because some of them I, I play with the flowers and then I, I look at them and I start talking, you know, to myself, if I was a leaf, what shape would I be, you know, and I kind of like the fact that they've designed these leaves that no matter whether you put it with this part sticking out or whether you turn it that way, you can get two different designs. Someone asked what you're using for the pollen instead. It's called pollen, Linwood, um, Lupin Blossom and Linwood. And we sell it here at the store by Tonic Nouveau. But you can use anything. You, you can use, you know, just the, the stamens that come in the set. 
So I'm going to use um, YG95 and YG99. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Scratch that. These are my favorite mark. YG99 and YG63. So the first thing I do, oops, not that end. The first thing I do, and this was a little trick that I figured out the other day. So I'm going to go right up the center of this leaf or this flower. It's supposed to be a flower petal, but you know, it kind of looks like a leaf. And I'm going to go in here with the darkest of the two colors. Just like that. And I'm just kind of recreating the veins on the flower. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is take my YG63, which is the lighter marker, and I'm going to color just like this. Now, all of a sudden, I have four leaves that I can use under my flower. And of course, I'm going to coat the back of it. And this is going to give me just enough moisture in that paper to shape my leaves. A what? A realistic bee. With a, pollen. Oh, bee? Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. We need to. Okay, so Anita, you guys got to get on that. Get me, <laughs> get me a, um, a bee. Uh, Ruth would like to know where you found those scissors. They are Elizabeth Craft Designs scissors. They are gorgeous. You can get them on the ECD website or at BoQ Creations, which either one. They are sold by Elizabeth Craft Designs. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing that I just did, the same technique that I just did with the flowers, only I'm going to do this with the leaf. Except this time, I'm going to fold that leaf all the way up. All right? Right down the center where I made those marks, I'm going to fold that leaf all the way up. And then I'm going to take and do my tweezers and just twist the ends like this, just twist the ends. Look how beautiful and realistic that looks. So now what I can do is I can actually cut one of the leaves off like so, and then I have a three petal and one petal leaf that I can put underneath my flower like that. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that. I love that effect. Now, if you want just a single leaf, you can certainly put that in like that. So that's what I am going to do next. Um, we do have these gorgeous leaves here, so I'm going to um, do this the same exact way. These are the leaves that come with the set. You've got one large and uh, one small. Of course, I cut a hundred of these out. I hope you guys can see these. So I'm going to take the darker of the marker and I'm going to follow up that emboss line that's right down the center of the leaf and that is made by the die. And then just come up again with my little, just make veins on it. Kind of makes it look interesting. There we go. So I used G94 Char and then I used you know what? I messed that up. Sorry, guys. This one was supposed to be my, my dark one. I didn't pay attention. That's okay. I can die cut another one. Let's take that out of there. Here we go. Now there is a nice embossed line right down the center of the leaf. So don't worry if you, um, if you're not good at drawing or doing a straight line, it's okay because they actually put it up the middle for you. And then all I'm doing is just going down the leaf here, just like that, and blending that in. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing. Now there is one more step that I do to my leaves um, that, oops. One more thing I do to my leaves. You go ahead and coat the back of it because you know you don't want the bottom of it being white if you can see it, especially when they're shaped. When you're doing the florals flat, it doesn't matter if you color the back of it or not. But when you're doing it, um, when you're doing the florals shaped, you really want to make sure that they stay, you know, colored on both sides. So I am going to use the forest moss 
and um, one of my little blending brushes. Where's my little blending brush? My little green ones. It's okay. All right, so I'm going to use my little blending brush here, and I'm just going to add a little bit of green ink to the leaves just to give it a little bit more um, something, you know, just a little bit more. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Let me shape these before I... Same thing right down the center. See how I accidentally have a little bit of white on there? It's okay. I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to take my ball stylus and I'm going to go down the center here just like that. There we go. And then I'm going to take my tweezers and do the same thing right up the middle, fold it in half, turn it around, twist it right up the center. Twist it. Right up the center and fold it and then twist the end. And then we're going to take a little bit of our green ink. And I'm not worried about that white because as soon as I put the distress on the edge of that, it's going to be fine. But this leaf just wants to get away, doesn't it? It takes a little bit more time and effort to do realistic florals, but trust me, when we get to the end and all of this is put together, you're going to be so amazed that you were able to do this. It is absolutely stunning. Okay, so um, here we have some white flowers and some pink flowers. Now this one, I only put one of the star pieces in there with some pollen on it. Um, and these I doubled up. So you can see the difference between when you double up with the pollen and how thick and full the center is. So, um, you know, it's all up to you. Whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. Included in that set are these beautiful lacy leaves. Look at this. So it has these and this set. Isn't that gorgeous? So um, just to add a little something to the background, I have taken this and some mousse from Nouveau. And just one of my little blending brushes here, my blending stumps. And I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to my piece right here by just coloring this beautiful lacy leaf and making this part of my background and my flowers. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the lacy. I can cut this apart into pieces. I can use the whole thing in my embellishment piece, whatever I wanna do. Isn't that gorgeous? So now I can add that. What a gorgeous color blue. Love it. And that is gonna be in there with my flowers. All right, so here we go. So now, I have a piece of cardstock, some brown cardstock and a cream um, layering piece over top of it. And then I have this gorgeous die cut. Love that die cut. Now, how beautiful is this? Just, you know, before there's anything in the background, how beautiful is this? to just put a flower in the center of that with a happy birthday and maybe some leaves poking out of that. Tell me somebody would not want to receive a birthday card with one of those gorgeous flowers on there like that. Absolutely gorgeous. So I can take a, um, a stencil. 
let me grab one of my stencils here from Elizabeth Craft Designs. All right, so just a little background stencil here, something florally. Okay, I'm just going to do this and add in a little bit of color, just a little bit. Let's see, what color is that flower? That's a very pink flower. So let's do um, a little bit of a light pink in the background. So I'm just taking one of my... You would love to get a birthday card like that? <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to just add a little bit of ink just to... I'm not trying to color the whole background, just enough to say that there is something in the background because I don't want it to compete with my flowers, but just something very light. There we go. And then I'm gonna pop dot up this piece right here. Here we go, just adding a little bit of pink and I'm using beige cardstock. And I'm gonna take and put some foam dots on the back of it. because I want this piece. Look how beautifully they all work together. I think you guys did an amazing job of planning this set out. Absolutely. Oh yes, it would make a great Mother's Day card as well. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna pop dot that up. Here we go. Love this. Okay. And then I'm gonna take um, these bright pink florals that I have right here. And I'm actually going to layer all three of them. Let's see, let's put the big guy in the middle. There we go. And then I always dry fit before I put my flowers together because I want to make sure that um, it's going to work, you know? So I'm going to put a little bit of leaves in there just like that. And let's see, I might need one of those other leaves maybe down here. Hope this needs a little ink on the edges. I forgot to ink this one's edges. We can't let it go without inking. All right, so now all we gotta do is just glue it down. That's it. I love the way it looks. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to glue these down. And again, I'm gonna bring in my kid's choice glue. This is the best glue on the planet for the florals if you ask me. Even if you don't ask me, I'll still tell you it's the best glue on the planet for these florals. So we're gonna put this big, lovely flower in the middle. Now watch when I put it down. I'm not gonna force it down into the center. All I'm gonna do is that one little tweezer right there I'm going to push it down because I want all of the leaves to pop up. Okay, so I'm just putting a little bit of glue on there. Nothing major. Do not over glue. You don't need to. There we go. And this one. I'm probably going to make it look a little bit more like a bud. There we go. Just holding it down there. This is super quick grab glue, so um, you don't have to worry about it. Once you put it there, it'll stay there. Watch this with the leaf. So I'm gonna turn this. I'm gonna stick that leaf in at an angle. See that? And it will stay right there because it's quick grab. See that? Isn't that beautiful? So now I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of that part, slide it underneath this flower, just like that. And look how gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Now there is a stamp set with this release. And what I love most about this release is not only did they give us a stamp set, 
but they also gave us a die in the book binding. Um, so there's the beautiful stamp set. And in the, the, the book set, there is this one little die that I think is absolutely probably the best um, die from the whole collection. And it kind of looks like this. It's a banner. So um, I'm going to die cut that out and I'm going to stamp one of these beautiful birthday stamps on there. And that's going to be my happy birthday stamp. Okay, so we're going to cut this out. Let's see. I buried my, my machine plates over here, guys. Hold on just a second. <laughs> And of course, I'm using the Elizabeth Craft Design cardstock. Of course, I'm using the Elizabeth Craft Design cardstock. All right. Now watch this banner. This is what I love about this banner, okay? So in the banner, there are two um, score lines on each end that will give this banner a um, popped up effect. I love that. I think it just really, really goes with the um, theme of the dimensional florals. And it also, with the stamp, it, the stamp is curved, so it fits perfectly onto the banner. Look at that. Happy birthday. And then watch what, once I bend that, I fold it that way, fold it that way. Look at that. And then I can add a little banner to this birthday card. Maybe down here at the bottom. I think I'd go right there. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Of course, I didn't stamp it correctly, so I'm not going to stick it. But yes, isn't that beautiful? And then it will go on top of the brown card base. And there we go. What a beautiful card. I love this banner. This banner and that whole, that made it whole, the whole set worth it to me was the stamp set and the banner. Love it. Okay, now I already did a frame for you and I painted it. Here it is. So this is one of the new Elizabeth Craft Design frames. Here we go. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? It's a five by seven. I cut it down to five by seven and I painted it with um, glacier paste. And so now on the inside of it, that's where I'm going to put these beautiful, um, this beautiful pot and these gorgeous pink flowers that I just made along with the blue. There's that. There's these gorgeous pink flowers. And here's the leaves. We may have to cut a few more, color a few more. Tips for mailing cards with flowers. So we do carry a box, a clear acetate box that you can put these down in and you can mail them right in the box. So I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how to put the um, frame together. So you're going to cut four pieces like this from the cardstock and there are score lines on here. Okay. Now I will tell you that it seems a little fidgety at first, but trust me, you're gonna want to take and fold that cardstock just like that on each one of the score lines, okay? Be really careful that you cut, that you, that you fold right on that score line because it does not work if you don't do it exactly on the score line, okay? So take your time to make sure that that score line is actually perfectly done and that you've burnished it down with your um, bone folder because it really does make a difference. You want to make sure that those score lines are exactly like they should be. 
Now you can cut these down to five by seven if you want to, or four by four, whatever you want to do, whatever size you want to make it. You just trim that much off the end and that's how big your um, thing is going to be. Yes, we are Penny, a craft store that sells Elizabeth Craft Design products proudly. In Orlando, Florida, we proudly display Elizabeth Craft Designs products. We love ECD products here. All right, so I'm going to take some of the Elizabeth Craft Design tape that is perfectly made for this purpose. Here we go. I have been a fan of Elizabeth Craft Design products for a long time. Um, I've worked many, many shows with Els and Yoop. I absolutely love their product. I think that the ideas that they come up with are amazing. Look at that. So you put that together, and now you have um, what I call a frame segment. Okay? So I have a 5 by 7 I'm sorry, what? Um, you know... It's kind of up in the air for me, Mercedes, because um, I find the 90 pound is just a little bit easier to fold, but once it's glued together, it really does not um, change to me whether or not you use 110 pound or the 90 pound. I, I find that once it gets glued together, it's pretty, um, it's pretty sturdy, yes. So the first thing you want to do before you start gluing is make sure that the back portion of the frame is, you know, that you dry fit it because this is extremely important because when you get to the bottom, you want all of the pieces facing the same direction. Okay. So as you can tell, I need to trim this one down. I think that's why I was going to show you guys. Okay. So I'm going to lay it flat and I'm going to cut it down to the same size as this one. And I believe they are both seven inches. I think that's what I ended up um, doing it as, seven inches. But just to make sure that they're both the same, because I don't want an uneven frame, I'm going to fold it over and cut it exactly where that one is. That way they're both the same. Okay, so I went ahead and pre-made these. And it's very simple. You find the bottom. You make sure that's all facing the same direction. And you insert it just like this. Dry fit it to make sure that you've got all of the, the pieces facing the same way and that they all fit. See that? Um, the 90 is 240 G. I'm not sure what 110 is. I don't have a pack in my studio with me at the moment so see now my frame is it fits all the pieces go together and now i'm going to take my glue and i'm just going to go right inside of this piece right here with a little bit of glue you can use your kids choice glue certainly um, i just find it a little bit easier with this tip so what's the 110 300 g for those of you in the uk and now I'm going to use my mat right here because I have a square or you can use a block or whatever. Whatever will make you have a perfectly square piece. And I'm going to make sure that that corner is lined up. And I'm just going to hold that there for one second to make sure that it that it's adhered. That's all there is to it. I'm going to take this one, do the same thing. My glue is clogged, of course. That always happens, but it's okay, I have a backup. I'm just gonna put some glue down inside of there. Take the next piece, put it in. Same thing, I'm gonna make sure it is square. And then I'm going to just hold it there for a moment. See how beautiful and easy that comes together? It is not difficult. You just cut four pieces. I think it'll do up to an eight by eight, if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna let that sit for just a moment because those two legs are kind of rocky. 
and then I'm gonna put my glue on the inside of here. This is my last piece. Once you put this piece in, everything is together. And I'm just putting the glue around here because this is my last piece. And both ends are gonna go in at the same time. See, that side and this side. See that, see how easy that frame goes together? I mean, can it get any easier than that? And then in this set, they give you two different sizes. They give you a wide one that's almost an inch, and then they give you um, the smaller half inch. I know, isn't it wonderful? So that's all you have to do. And then you can paint it, ink it, whatever you'd like to do. Um, I painted mine with um, gold glacier paste, and that's how I got this one. So once it was done, I just painted it with gold glacier paste, and that was it. And I use Nouveau Mousse on this one. So you can use any medium that you'd like. Okay. And so while this one is drying through the magic of television, we're going to have one already done and painted <laughs> so that we can keep moving on. No need to watch paint dry. And then I'm going to make a flower pot really quickly with these new dyes. Absolutely lovely. Now look what they did. I thought this was absolutely genius. Do you see they made a slit right here so I can fit my flowers down in there and they look dimensional. So I loved that idea. Way to go, you guys. Absolutely love it. And they did the same thing with the bottom of the, um, the flower pot or bucket or whichever one that you want. There's my piece down at the bottom. Now, of course, you could cut this out with any color paper that you want to. I just find it's much easier for me um, to, I don't know if I need this one on this. I just find it much easier for me to color everything. Um, I can use my uh, inks if I have distress ink or terracotta or whatever color ink that I'd like. Um, I do have kind of a um, orangey kind of look. Here. The older frames do not make slimline, so they're a little bit longer, Dina. Great question. And Kenny asked if this was part of the new set of frames. Oh, yes, it is part of the new set that came out. Yes. Good question, Penny. Thank you. So I'm just using my, um, my brush here, and I'm just inking these pieces. Look how beautiful that, and I, you know, I keep, I tell all of our customers that this cardstock with the, the soft finish cardstock with the texture on it, it just really, really enhances anything that you put on it, any color, any medium, um, that texture is just absolutely gorgeous. And of course you could stencil on this, you could stamp on it, you could do anything you want to at this moment. Look at the bottom of this plate. Isn't that cool that this bucket is going to fit right inside of there? Look how dimensional that is. You don't have to put it on top of it. You know, the last time um, that we had a bucket, it, you had to set the bucket on top and it just didn't look right to me. So now you can actually slide the pot right down inside of that bottom piece. I love that. That is so cool. Here we go, put a little bit of glue down at the bottom right here. Slide that in. And that's all the coloring that I'm gonna do to that pot. See how easy that was? Take my piece right here. I am gonna pop this up with some um, mini dots. Yes, you can. That is an absolutely great question. So all you do is you take the um, square end and you slide it inside of another one. And um, just so long as you end up with, wait, is that stuck down? Just so long as you end up with one mitered end and one end that is square. Okay, so yes, you can extend it by sliding it in there. The two ends together. Let me see if I have one done. So you slide an, an additional piece onto here. Just make sure that you have one end that looks like this and one end that looks like this, and it, you should have no problem putting it together. 
I know the pot fits perfectly in there. I, I was so in love with that aspect of this die that I kept going, finally, somebody thought of that. I just have been for many years saying that we should, you know, do something to make that <laughs> happen. Look at that pot. Isn't that gorgeous? So on my frame, I know I could put something in the background, but I don't want anything to distract from my flowers at the moment. So in my frame, it's going to look like this. I'm going to put my pot down a little bit lower. Just like that. You know what? I could put a little bit of ground and a little bit of sky. I could do that real quick. All right. Just some little blue um, sky and a little brown or grayish for the bottom. Just to give us the hint that it's supposed to be sky and ground. We'll do that real quick. Just a little bit of sky up here just to kind of make it, you know, look a little less blank back there. There we go. How fun is this, right? Like, it is so much fun. Let's see, there is spearmint. That's the one I used. Okay, just a little bit more blue up in here. Okay, and then we have a little bit for the grass and then it's done. All right, a little bit of green at the bottom. I can use my forest moss right here. Just something to say that this is supposed to be the bottom. You know, we don't want it floating. We want to ground it, make sure that it's, that it looks proper. Now, one thing that I do like to do, since I made my flowers and I've spent so much time making the flowers, one thing I do like to do with my bone folder is I like to turn my pot over and just kind of take my bone folder and shape the inside of that pot just enough to make it look a little bit round. See that? It just really helps it to, to look a little bit round on your project. See that? And it's standing up. So I'm gonna use my Kids Choice glue here, put a little bit on the back and a little bit on the bottom, and that's all I'm gonna need. I may put a little um, pop dot in here. Right in the center just to give it a little lift. There we go, how gorgeous is that? Now this part is gonna stick down, this is gonna be popped up, and this part is gonna stick down. So when I glue it down to my frame, this is what I'm gonna have. So I'm gonna have this big beautiful flower here, and I'm gonna have another little flower here, right? And then in the background, I have this lovely lacy piece. I told you it was gonna be worth it when we, when we cut, put it all together. So I have this gorgeous blue sprig that I can stick into my little flower pot here. Just like that in the back. Look at that. What a nice big flower. And then I can take some of my green leaves. Put some leaves up underneath here. Look at how gorgeous this is. It is, oh my gosh, I have to go, you guys. I'm being told that it's after time. There we go. Okay, so I won't waste time gluing that down. I'll just kind of show you how it is going to look. So there, so I will make one more little flower to probably put in there. I just wanted to show you how gorgeous these flowers can be. Um, let me see, let me put a little bit more glue. I want to show you the finished product. It's absolutely beautiful. All right, so I'm going to take and put a little bit of glue. Just on the bottom of the flower, because I don't want the flower to um, get glued down to the paper. I want it to be able to stand up on its own. What a gorgeous flower. Gorgeous, gorgeous flower. 
See that? This big, gorgeous leaf, I can take it and just stick it in the glue and pop it right underneath that flower and it just will be my, my leaf hanging there. Look at how beautiful. See how easy it comes together once you've shaped the flowers? <laughs> now that you've gotten the flowers shaped and in the bucket, here's another little leaf. Now see, I could use that leaf this direction or I can flip it around and use it that direction. I love the ability to change around the leaves. Absolutely gorgeous. Let me turn this a little bit over here so we have some greenery popping out over here. And then our little blue piece right here, um, I'm going to shape this just a little so that it stands up. Just pinching those edges right there just so that it looks a little more dimensional. Putting some glue on it. Tucking that in behind. Look how pretty. I love that. I feel like I need one more little leaf in the back, back here. So I'm just gonna take this one, shape it real quick. Luckily, I already had them um, made <laughs> over here. So all I gotta do is just add some greenery to it. And then look, I can take it and pop as many. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely love it. Then I can put it on my frame here and now I have a framed piece that I can send to anybody. How about that? So thank you, Elizabeth Craft Designs, Ls and Designers, for giving us these absolutely beautiful, realistic florals. I am so excited that I'm going to be able to create with these for many, many years to come. And I know that we are... Um, going to have some more coming out. I'm, I'm absolutely hoping that, um, I found another little flower over here that I think needs to go onto our card. Maybe we'll see. We'll see if that one needs to, yes, it does. Why not, right? It's all the same color. We might as well put it on there. So again, Elizabeth Craft Design Soft Finish Cardstock, the only cardstock that I will use for my flower shaping. My florals, the only one I will use. Um, the new release, absolutely stunning. You can make cards, you can make frame pieces. I just want to show you some of the other beautiful tags. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous creations that you can do with the new Elizabeth Craft Design floral number four release. I hope you guys have enjoyed um, watching how we create these flowers, and I hope you will give it a try. It is very simple. You guys can make it as beautiful as, as you wish. You are Mother Nature, but don't forget that you're going to need to purchase your Kids' Choice glue and your um, Elizabeth Craft Design cardstock, the soft finish cardstock. I would not attempt <laughs> to make my realistic florals without without my um, soft finish cardstock. This is the florals number four that I use today, and you can purchase it either from Elizabeth Craft Designs or Bokeh Creations. We do carry all of Elizabeth Craft Designs products here. So um, this is florals number 14 that we used and the frames. So they all are out in the new collection. So thank you guys so much for allowing me to be here. And um, again, have a great day. Bye.